people pumping the pond out today. Drain all the water down, cutting out, cutting back all the water lilies. It's the easiest way to do it. Then I think we'll have a look at the fish. Have a bit of a, a bowl up and measure up of some of these. Check on the health, get the pond filled back up. Half well water, half tap water, and they're ready for winter. Right, I'm lucky I've got, well, I've got a super long hose. I've got to go all the way around there, all the way around there, just, just to use up the length. And then I've got a manhole there that goes straight in. It would be so much easier if I got a pipe that long. Oh, I don't want to cut my lay flat hose down too much. So onward and upward. Yeah, now about to call in the big guns. Two pumps, it's taking too long to drain. It's not to see the fish now at least anyway. Super slippy. Watch out fish, here I come. Now, is it just me? Every time I spread all these out equally all around the pond, a month later, they're all in a bunch right next to the bloody pump. Is it the fish that does that? Is it some kind of vibration from the air that makes you slide downhill? Hmm. If you could let me know in the comments if that happens to you as well, if you have the same problem. I reckon it's the fish, I reckon they play football with them. Bloody annoying though, because I space them all nice and even between the lilies. God damn fish. Right, uh, sure. Got my tank ready, the uh, sock nets. So I'm going to start taking a few out and give them a quick me <coughs> measure while I'm at it. Might as well. Right, I'll crack on. Let's fish out these crafties from the growing show, Momotaro Kahaku. Looking very nice. Tiny little bit of cork box on his peck. I hope that won't be an issue. I'm not showing him anyway. Come on. Let's see if we can get a measurement on him. Let's see if he's grown any. It's about. Oh, what's that? Well, this taping in inches. I'm trying to read it in centimetres. God damn it. That's 12 inches. That's like 30 cm. <clears throat> yeah, it is. 12 to 12 and a half inches. Cool. That's going a little. Yep. The mirror can't try to beach itself. Next. Right, next up, female obviously. It's a really spawn once this spring. What was a lemon harawaki, the Yoshigoi one? But well, it's heading very fast towards being a Purachina. Which I'm not too bothered about. Beautiful skin luster. Still got the lemon harawaki genes in it. So we should throw out some lemon harawaki babies. If I cross it with a different line of harawaki. We shall see. Nice fish, all the same, looks healthy. Size is what it's going to be. I'm not going to stress them out too much and faff around and try and get an exact measurement. The nearest inch is good enough for what I want. 17 inches. Oh, let's get another one. Next fish up is my Ginrin Shiro. Looking very well. Time to get some of this zoomy coming through now. It's looking grey before it started to darken up nicely. Go on a bit further, a bit further. That's about 12, 12 and a half inches as well. Yeah. 
That one was very kindly gifted to me by um, Vicky from Bubbles and Fins. Lovely fish. Hopefully that's female as well. I'm hoping this kahaku is a male. Yeah, female kahakus, which I have four of. Hmm. Right, let's get a few more out. Ah, this one, another female. These, apart from the kahaku, all these should be females in here. This was a Benny Kiko that was orange with a few little sperm circles of black on it. It's just done a complete U-turn. Well, it's actually silvery. You can just see the silvery gunmetal coming back because it went jet black with only that orange patch left on its head. But now it's starting to um, come lighter again. Lovely looking fish. Looking forward to getting some fry off this one in the spring. Come on then, girl. Measure up. Get down that way. Now we can't keep. Yeah, that was about 14 inches. Oh, yeah. I'm getting down there now. Right, that's all of them. Two big kahakus, he's got a bit of uh, mucus on, or she's got a bit of mucus on the head. I've just done a scrape and as I suspected, Costia. That's why the pinky on the Shiroji. And uh, everybody else seems to do okay. A manky old kahaku there that keeps plodding on. It's about 100 years old. It's got shimmies that are bigger than some fish's sumi. Big Arigoki Miracarp. <sighs> Doing alright. And the Momotaro Karashi. I'm hoping she's going to spawn next year. She's, I think she's getting on for three, four years old, something like that. So she should be about ready. Right. Let me get the last of the crap out of this and get it filled up again. Get these back in. In fact, I might do them a PP dip before they go back in, just to knock the costia back, and then I shall treat the pond for costia. Mm. Onward. All right, guys. This is the day after cleaning the pond out. Got it all filled back up. Nice and clean. These guys are raring for some food now. And this kahaku here is the one that had costia. Still looking a little bit pinky, but it's quite its happy type that. Not anything for about two or three weeks. It's ready for some food now. What a difference the treatment makes. These have had a treatment of FMG to nuke any costia that's that's left. I gave them a dip as well, a dip treatment while they're out the pond to get all the immediate costia off them. So, oh, Tessie's in probably. Two or three days time see how the costier situations coming on but they're looking a whole lot happier all ready for winter lilies cut back no muck or slurry anywhere no fish poo on the bottom i must admit i mean it's a simple system i've got i've got the clover leaf and i've got a i think it's about a seven thousand litre pump um straight off the bottom Every time I drain this down, it's as clean as a whistle. There's no crap, no rubbish or anything. The only time I ever have an issue is if there's any blanket weed. God damn that blanket weed. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you like this kind of content, could you please like, share and subscribe to Gazza's Koi Pond. I'll catch you on the next one. Keep smiling, people.